Amazing. Another really interesting one that, again, is, is ubiquitous part of life, and that is what we wear, wool. So, and, and you have to help me with the last name, David Unipon. Okay. He's from Australia, an Aborigine, an activist, historian, uh, deeply rooted in his culture. And one of the things he did in 1909 was made an improvement for sheep shearing device. Mm -hmm. Now, in Australia, we know there's a lot of sheep shearing going on. <laughs> and all the wool products that we use here in the United States and around the world require us to uh, wear wool, especially during the cold weather. That's amazing. And the, the, there were many women as well. I want to talk, also talk about, uh, is it Tasima? Uh, it's actually a man, uh, an Ethiopian. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tasima yeah. Shifara. Yes. Who is the inventor of the Bowflex. Bowflex. It's a $193 million a year business, 2.5 Men Americans have bow flexes in their house. Mm -hmm. I know I have one. Yeah, yeah, I got one under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, okay, here's Darren the one. Jerry no. Man, born on Lake Alexandria in South Australia in 1872. He was the first Indigenous Australian to release a published book. A fiercely intelligent man, his genius was so respected, he became known as the Black Leonardo da Vinci of Australia. His memory, is celebrated by appearing on the Australian $50 note. Game of Hockey invented, started by escaped slaves. Those slaves were more than just, they became more than just hockey players. They became activists, very bold, very, uh, very aggressive activists. They not only invented the sport of hockey, they revolutionized it the, the, from every position, the slap shot, everything, uh, you know, the style of skating, all of that. That was us. So we're going to cover this again in the future. My vision uh, when I began working on the H2 Flex is to see um, an alternative to expensive um, oil and gasoline. So that was my sole vision, to find a way to minimize or eliminate the use of um, gasoline. H2 Flex works by, we have an apparatus or a product that combines water aluminum and caustic soda into a chemical reaction that produce the hydrogen gas on demand. The H2 flex will impact Jamaica greatly, especially when it comes to our economy. For instance, we spent over $2 billion, US dollars that is, on oil and gas processing and distribution. We could um, minimize that uh, or cut that in half. Um, so we would spend probably a billion dollars instead of two billion, or even way less than that, depending on how, how, um, how much people gravitate to, to it. Challenges I face in financing my invention um, is the greatest challenge of all. Uh, nobody's going to lend your money on a new technology until it's proven. So we went overseas looking for funding and all over the place, but those people actually want to take over the entire technology. So it's a big challenge. They want to take it away and perhaps lock it up. So it was a big challenge, still is. The DBJ helped in financing the invention by providing us with grant funding for intellectual property protection, which is patent and copyright. That could include trademark as well. Have you been able to... Now that I've protected the invention, the outlook is great. For instance, now we can... Um, seek additional funding without the fear of somebody ripping off the technology and 
we can also move towards manufacturing the the H2 Flex and distribute it to everybody around the world. Yes, I would surely recommend DBJ to any SME and innovators, uh, inventors, anybody who have a great idea. I would recommend that they go to DBJ and ask for the financial program that they have available. A group of Jamaican computer programmers are turning heads in the Silicon Valley in California. They're working on computer software that does human language translations in real time. They've impressed Microsoft, as Michael Sharp reports from California. Meet Damian Mitchell, Asen Baxter, Conroy Smith, and Imran Ali. They're all past students of the Northern Caribbean University and regional winners of the Imagine Cup sponsored by Microsoft and British Telecoms. The group is one of six top teams now assembled in San Francisco's Silicon Valley, hoping to transform their projects into viable products. The others are from Poland, Thailand, Mexico, Korea, and Ireland. The four Jamaicans hail from the parishes of Manchester and St. Elizabeth and got here by winning the regional competition between eight universities and then placing third on the world stage by heading off 54 other countries. They now hope to score again by winning the prize for the most viable project now being showcased at the Computer History Museum in San Francisco. But what exactly is this project? We got a theme from Microsoft which says imagine a world where technology enables a better education for all. Our solution basically dissolves language barriers in the sense that a student could be in Dominican Republic and the professor is in Jamaica, but whatever course material that the instructor is given in the class will be translated in the native language of that student in the Dominican Republic. So we saw where CADI can actually change the way that education is offered, not only in the Caribbean, but also on a global landscape. There was keen interest in Jamaica's project. The Imagine Cup is the world premier student competition which challenges students worldwide to take on a technology challenge for social change. It's not the first year Jamaica's done pretty interesting in the Imagine Cup, by the way. If you go through the history, the year before, uh, there was a great showing as well. So you, you clearly have a talent pool um, that uh, the world should pay attention to. I have to, I have to comment specifically on these guys because there is a charisma, and there is a personality, there is a, a remarkable level of intelligence um, that in this team you should all be extremely proud of uh, because they, they can do anything they want to do and I think we're lucky enough to have them with us today so you know I think they're a great indication of what we can expect from from Jamaica in the future now on the world stage the four members have gained invaluable lessons in life my family is behind me 100% and I think the family element in Jamaica is somewhat um, degraded I should say and that's one of the key Things that's missing in Jamaica right now and my friends they support me trust me they're behind me 100 percent they are always been a source of encouragement I want to make my mark on this world that whenever my children and grandchildren hear of Conroy Smith they say oh yes Conroy made some things happen for Jamaica made some things happen in this world so the intent is to bring our solution to the fullest bring it to where it matters most that Jamaica the Caribbean Central you know that area will benefit and the world at large. Whatever you do, do your best. Because you don't know when that opportunity will come for you to seize it. And as the team work on strategies to turn their ideas into dollars, there is work for them upon their return to Jamaica. We will be having a pilot run at the university, Northern Caribbean University, because we have several extension campuses. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be using this software on the other campuses and maybe have a class being taught from the main campus to see exactly how this software pilot it. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow, it's amazing. You guys have done a great job. This little rock called Jamaica has captured the world's attention with our music and in the field of sports. And now, four past students from NCU are set to conquer the field of information technology. Michael Sharp, Silicon Valley, California, for TVJ News. Hi, my name is Kim Bailey, and this is a story of the third place Jamaican robot called Jamba. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer hosts its annual robotics competition as a part of its Southeast Conference. Jamaica is the only non-American country represented at the competition. Our robotics team flew to America and immediately started working. And working we did. And more work. And even more work. 
over 50 other universities from the United States of America were represented at the competition and small Jamaica stick to the mantra that we little but with Talawa. Our robot was finally ready for the road. The robot was a small device designed to fit in your roof or attic and in the event of any electrical damages, the robot should be able to measure voltage, waveform, temperature and other parameters and make a decision accordingly. <laughs> the Jamaican robot executed its task efficiently and came out third, yes third in the open competition. We proudly walked to the stage and collected our award. If China, Japan and Germany can do it, Jamrock can do it too. My generation will let the world know that Jamaica is more than just tourism, more than just sun, sand and sea. This is Innovation Nation, home of the Kimroy Bailey Robotics Camp. Visit our website at www.kimroybailey.com and see how you can learn to make the Bailey Robotics a firefighter robot powered by solar energy and controlled with a smartphone made right here in Jamaica. We have evening, weekend, summer and online camps to share our technology to help our economy grow to a new dimension. This is Team KB. Let's keep believing. Register today. somebody slim you can put it on over and slim if I'm gonna do for somebody slim I put it right there and then I do this three four five six seven then I cut then I tie then I tie Lash it like that. This one is gonna be all green and colors of a meaning. Green reminds you of the trees and it means prosperity. This bracelet is partly machine made and partly animal. That's why it's so unique. It has its own latch made from string. The latch is made from string. It was from I was age 11, I was inventing stuff. I didn't, I was poor. I didn't have the money to make, to buy ties, so I invented my own ties. I invented tie boats, tie airplanes, robots, and different type of machines. Whenever you're inventing anything, believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. Follow your dreams. If you believe you're rich, you're already rich. Whatever you believe you are, that's what you are. If you believe that you are the richest person in the world, you are the richest person. If you believe you are like, like the most wisest man in the world, you are the most wisest man. Whatever you believe, that is what it is. Because when it, when it all boils down, everything that is man-made came from your imagination. And if you imagine, then you can do anything. You can create anything. And you have to be positive. Everything comes from belief. We were created because of belief. Words are very powerful. God used words to make the world. So you can use words, just say I will invent, I will invent something new and you will invent.